Good Saturday morning, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with a very serious, important weather forecast. In this update, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a rare day three moderate risk of severe weather over Des Moines, Iowa, over southwestern Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, with a threat for several strong to intense tornadoes that are anticipated in this risk, giant hailstones, and damaging 80 plus mile an hour wind gusts that are all anticipated on Monday. This makes this a prolific, significant, severe weather outbreak. In fact, we could have strong tornadoes developing down here along the dry line in northern Texas, western and central Oklahoma, stretching across Kansas City into northern and central Missouri as well. This is not just a localized tornado outbreak. This is a huge risk, and you can clearly see this on the categorical chance risk here from the Storm Prediction Center with a 15 sig for severe weather down here in Texas with a 45 significant for severe weather up here across Iowa, Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin. But also, I did not want to ignore the slight risk for severe weather on Sunday, April the 27th, 2025, the day before the big tornado outbreak that we expect on Monday. And there's your slight risk here because I am confident that they're going to expand this slight risk a little further further to the north, as well as a little bit further to the south, right along that dry line, where we could have some big time large hailstones, possibly two plus inches in diameter, the risk for 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts and a few tornadoes, especially here in Kansas. And as matters of fact, when we take a look at the tornado risk there, you can see there is a 2% risk for tornadoes in far western Kansas into Nebraska with a 15% risk for damaging winds and a 15% risk for very large hail. Like I just mentioned, we could have hailstones up to about 2 inches plus in diameter. But there's also going to be an extreme risk for high fire danger due to serious winds coming out of the southwesterly direction with sustained winds between 25 to 40 miles an hour with wind gusts between it's 65 to 80 miles an hour, especially in the higher elevations where the winds are maximized typically. This includes for El Paso, Texas, and for Albuquerque, New Mexico, where you have an extreme, a level three critical to extreme fire danger on Sunday. Do not burn, please, because any burning and any fires that start will spread explosively fast. Okay, so let's take a look at the latest severe weather forecast here on the GFS model, because a lot of you are pretty concerned right now that there is that moderate risk for on Monday. Okay, that's going to be the big day, but we're also, again, concerned about be Sunday being significant, especially over here in Nebraska, as well as southern portion there of South Dakota, where the dry line and surface low will be in place. In fact, here's a snapshot here from the GFS for Sunday afternoon, right around, say, 5 to 7 p.m., where we do have this dry line that's going to be in place here from western Texas into western Oklahoma, far western Oklahoma, the panhandle there, and far western on the border there of um, Colorado and Kansas into Nebraska and out ahead of this we're going to have increasing moisture we're going to have some lift we're going to have instability to deal with and with steepening lapse rates overspreading the moist warm sector we are going to certainly get some intense thunderstorms and again some of these will pose all severe hazards tornadoes wind damage and some very large hailstones because of the instability that's going to be in place that's going to be able to release into the atmosphere now, as we go into the overnight Sunday into Monday, things transition into a more broader, well-developed warm sector because, of course, a dry line doesn't move very fast like a cold front does. And this is going to be a three-facet system. In fact, a very dynamic system by all means. Let's draw it up here on the screen. So what we have in place here to start the period for Monday morning for your morning commute there on the 28th, we have this dry line that's going to be in place all the way from western Texas into Oklahoma, into Kansas, and Nebraska, moving into that um, low pressure system where it's all going to intersect. And then we have a warm front that is going to be in place across far southern portion there of Minnesota into northeastern Iowa, as well as Wisconsin and uh, into Illinois as well. And then, of course, behind it, we have a cold front that's going to be draping across the area, moving across southern Montana into Wyoming. 
And when you get this, we get a what we call a triple point where we get maximized vorticity, uh, streamwise vorticity at the surface, surface-backed winds, okay, in the southeastern quadrant of this low pressure system. And that really augments the threat for strong to intense tornadoes. And that is why the Storm Prediction Center is extremely concerned about that on Monday. But to start the period here, most of these storms early on for Monday morning will be elevated, but still some marginal severe hail and damaging winds will be the primary concerns with those storms as they do remain elevated above the boundary layer. These are not surface-based. They're not going to ingest surface parcels that would otherwise lead to tornado genesis. Instead, these will be elevated above that boundary layer. That makes sense. So as we go forward here, it's really going to get concerning. From about 21Z on Monday, that's about 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time in Minnesota and in Iowa. What we have here, again, is this dry line that is going to be in place, all right? This dry line is not going to move very much, and it's going to be kind of curled up like this towards the surface low. And then you get this cold front, this bent back occluded front, and then you get this warm front. So everything here is really dynamic for this to all be set off in a rapid fashion. And then uh, as we go into, say, Monday evening here, right around 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time, that's when the storms really fire up along that dry line. Some of these, again, will be intense supercells, and any supercell in this environment will be capable of producing strong to intense not even be surprised here because of the instability, the kinematics that are getting involved, that we even see a violent tornado in this parameter space, especially in northeastern and far eastern portion there of Iowa. An EF2 or an EF3 or maybe even worse than that could be on the docket for Monday evening. And then you got this cold front that is going to be surging southward. And that's going to allow some upscale growth into a very powerful Boeing line segment, what we call an MCS or a QLCS. And that will just make things even worse because there's going to be widespread significant wind damage, perhaps over 70 to 80 miles an hour. And if we get any kinks within the line, we could in fact get QLCS tornadoes. And some of those could be intense and brief and pretty much come out of nowhere. So make sure you have your weather radio going for sure on Monday into Tuesday because it is going to be a very rough night ahead for a lot of you here living across the Northern Plains and even back here across Texas. This whole area is just going to be on fire with storms, unfortunately, for your Monday afternoon into Tuesday morning. Now, going forward, let's just quickly address the risk on Tuesday because that includes, again, for Oklahoma as well as Indiana, but it does not look to be quite as serious in some sense, especially mainly like Tuesday afternoon. We do have a nice line of storms that do pop up, but the good thing is here we don't have a very strong low-level jet to help initiate a lot of vorticity or a lot of um, helicity to help ingest into these storms, otherwise producing tornadoes. Not that we won't see tornadoes on um, Tuesday, but it does not look nothing like what we will be seeing on Monday. But still, at least a 2% down here for a tornado, maybe a 5%, a small area there could be needed in subsequent outlooks. Of course, once we get into day two, once that occurs, we'll know more about that on Saturday or like Sunday. Sunday night, at least, when the day two outlook comes in. And then, of course, large hail and damaging wind gusts. But the hail threat does not look nothing like what we'll see on uh, Monday, which, by the way, we could have uh, almost dvd size hail. It's more like lesser than that, but I'm telling you, some of the worst storms we can see, um, strongest storms, could have some hail stones that we have not seen in quite some time. Now, looking at the upper level chart here, I'm going to use something a little different here because this kind of gives us an idea on the energy that this trough has with it. And this is over my area. We had a thunderstorm earlier here. Quite crazy. Yes, it's late April and we're getting rain and it's 47 degrees outside. Yeah, 47. The average low here is 53 degrees. So we're already below average with our overnight lows. 
So as we go forward, that trough is going to be ejecting into the high plains on Sunday. And look at all of this energy that is involved here. Lots of negative and positive vorticity advection. So a lot of lift in the atmosphere. And with that cap eroding by the afternoon on Sunday, that's why we're going to have storms that initiate along that dry line, especially with northward extent where that load develops quickest. And then by Monday, some of that energy ejects into the northern plains as well as into the northern Great Lakes here. And again, south of that is where we have rapid height falls. Okay, when you have your heights falling in the atmosphere, this is at 18,000 feet, your temperatures are cooling aloft, so we get very steep lapse rates in the atmosphere with that EML overspreading, and we introduce instability, and that's gonna be the concern. So when we look at the 500 millibar wind chart here, you can see how that all progresses. That trough comes out of the west and then moves into the northern plains here, and south of that is where we are going to have the concerns of very high kinematics, where we have a 500 millibar flow here at 18,000 feet that is on the order of 90 knots that is really strong okay quite intense over central northern iowa and minnesota and wisconsin you can just kind of trace that back and when we look at the 850 millibar flow that low level jet really gets going um, overnight sunday to monday yeah that's 68 knots there over kansas and then that moves into wisconsin and iowa where we have low level winds here around 50 to 60 knots and that is pretty strong uh, when you think about it the good thing here, I guess I can say is we're not seeing significant veering between the 850 millibar to 500 millibars. But when we look at the surface wind, uh, let's actually bring that up here. Let's yeah, right here. Uh, surface winds are really going to pick up on Sunday here. Look at this over um, New Mexico and then eventually moving into the high plains. Southerly flow there by Monday morning, anywhere between about 20 to 30 knots. That's about... 25 to 35 miles an hour or so and then this moves into Iowa and pay attention right about in here where we have winds that are more southerly at the surface you can see the flow doing this um, and even some southeasterly flow so if we get any backing of the winds like this uh, we could introduce and again if any supercell that is able to or any supercell that does establish itself in this environment will be more than capable of producing a very, very intense tornado, perhaps, and some giant hailstones and some wind gusts that could reach 70 plus miles an hour, even 80 miles an hour um, at times. Now, lapse rates are going to be very steep, especially as we go into Monday here, overspreading this warm sector where we have dew points, or not dew points, mid-level lapse rates here on the order of about eight to eight and a half degrees Celsius per one kilometer, getting close to nine degrees up here in central Minnesota. That's going to introduce um, a lot, um, actually, uh, when, yeah, let's look at that. That's going to introduce a lot of instability. Some instability on Sunday, as you can see here, quite a bit, actually, two to 3,000 joules of surface space cape. And then as we go into uh, Monday here, that's where our instability is going to be really high. And this is, in other words, this is how much energy these thunderstorms are going to be having. These updrafts are going to be intense. They're going to be deep because our instability here is on the order of 3,500 to almost 4,000 joules per kilogram. So our uh, strong to extreme instability and destabilization is anticipated here across this warm sector all the way from, you could even trace it back here, to far southwestern Texas, all the way into uh, Missouri, as well as into Iowa. And it's really this area where I'm really concerned, where we're gonna have a lot of problems, a lot. We're, I, I'm thinking we're gonna have uh, more than at least 15 or 20 tornado reports on Monday. That's a guarantee with several hundred, perhaps not several hundred, that's 700, but you get the idea, we're gonna have a lot and a lot of wind damage reports coming in and a lot of hail reports. Get ready, folks. Make sure you have your storm chasing gear going because you're going to need it uh, on Monday. And then on Tuesday, lots of instability down here in the Ozarks and the Deep South. And that is why we are going to have showers and thunderstorms that develop along this cold front as it kind of orientates itself from east northeast to east southeast or east northeast to um, west southwest.
Now, dew points, like I just mentioned, there's going to be a lot of moisture advecting northward out ahead of this. You can see um, the warm air coming off the Gulf and moving into the high plains. Uh, on Monday, we have dew points that are going to be in the upper 50s to lower 60s and then mid to upper 60s as we go into Monday here. Now, I wish we, of course, this was really close range because we can use mixed layer dew point. Um, when I do a live stream, I'll explain why that's more accurate, but surface based um, dew point here may be overdone a little bit. So dew points on the order of about 64 to 66 to 67 degrees are anticipated nonetheless, and that's pretty rich. Um, this far north with dew points in the 60s into far northern Minnesota and Wisconsin. Yeah, this is a powerful system and a lot of moisture is going to be streaming northward out ahead of this puppy. Now, with that being said, I really, really hope you guys take this very seriously. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. We've got to get the word out to a lot of you that are going to be impacted by this. This is not just about the moderate risk or the enhanced risk. We are going to be seeing some strong tornadoes down here, I believe, in northern or northern and western Texas into Oklahoma. This is a very widespread tornado risk extending all the way up here and all the way down here. Uh, and, and this is a very populated area, and it covers a huge margin, a huge aerial space. So if you have not shared this video with your family and friends on social media, please do so. Let's get this out um, to the algorithm. Well, uh, out on uh, TikTok, on however you want to call it. So the algorithm could push this out to a lot more people, all right? Because at the end of the day, I'm here to save lives. I'm here to give you guys the latest information on this severe weather outbreak. But you could only do that if you do subscribe to the channel. If you don't subscribe, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on all my updates, including my upcoming tropical weather routine outlooks that I'll have here on the YouTube channel. And also hit the like button and hit the bell notification icon so you get all of my updates, all right? Because if you don't ring the bell icon, how do you know if I uploaded, right? So make sure you do hit the bell icon and also leave a comment. Let me know. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are about this tornado outbreak. Do you think we could have intense tornadoes? Please let me know in the comments. I would love to interact with you guys because that's the whole point of the comment section is to interact with you all. But anyways... I'm going to get out of here and track the severe weather or give you guys the latest information. And if necessary, an uh, evening upload or a live stream on this may be necessary. We may have to go live and talk about this because this is pretty significant. So make sure you have all notifications on. Until next time, I'll be back with you more soon with more of this update.